in my second documentary dealing with the hypocrites and the repentance issue i featured a variety of preachers from different schools of thought including conventional free graces who hold to strongly free will positions when it comes to believing the gospel so like greg jackson and jack jack Spax, for instance but i also included a few clips by sovereign graces who are very anti-free will such as chris who you will know by his channel name truth speller and lewis who you will know by his channel name destroying the works of the devil and a couple of commentators wondered why i would feature those two alongside each other because of some controversies that arose between uh, between them and because of these controversies that the two groups became quite polarized with the free will type staying away from you know those other two and, and vice versa so the free will Freddy's just completely cut off the chosen charlies and, and labeled them calvinist devils preaching a false gospel and the chosen charlies accused the free will Freddy's of being scripture denying heretics and, and so on and so forth and and this happened several you know this has been going on for several months although it's perhaps quietened down a little bit now it got quite heavy a few months ago now i've managed to stay out of these arguments uh, because as i've said before this is not something i'm as dogmatic about it's not a hill that i want to die on particularly but i at the moment as far as i understand i have subscribers on both sides of the fence i have mutual subscribers with greg jackson and jack smack i see some of them in the comment section on their videos but I also have some mutual subscribers with Truth Beller and Destroying the Works of the Devil. So every once in a while, somebody will post a question on this issue and it, it can turn into a firestorm in the comments thread of some of my videos. Not too often, but it has happened. And a few months ago, somebody asked me to explain my position. And after I did, he accused me of trying not to offend both sides. Well, the truth of the matter is that I'm not anybody's strong ally on this issue. I don't really like throwing the word sovereign around anyway, because it's, it's not a word that's in the King James Bible vocabulary. But, I, you know, I am a bit sceptical about the free will position, as I, as I have explained so far. And, and I don't, but I don't see eye to eye with Chris and Lewis either. So I am quite a neutral party, really. Um, this whole controversy started a little over a year ago. Um, well, a bit longer than that. And I don't know the whole story, but I think... Lewis, destroying the works of the devil, he'd previously commented on my channel under the name Form Dog. I guess that was his old channel name. And I'd mentioned that he wanted to do his own content, so he was fairly new to the scene, but he made one or two comments against Free Will on my channel, saying that it's heresy, and I had a feeling that this guy might stir the pot a little bit. And so I believe uh, Greg Jackson and David Benjamin had cut him off and stopped communicating with him. I'm not sure how that all came about, and then Lewis and Chris started doing a lot of videos together against Greg Jackson and David Benjamin and a few other guys, and all hell broke loose. And so those guys are marking and avoiding those guys, and those guys are marking and avoiding these guys, and some folks are wondering where I fit into all of this. Um, well, the bottom line is I don't. Um, it's not my controversy, it's not my fight. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of YouTube Christian channels out there. There is nothing special about this drama that involves me particularly. I'm just on the sidelines with the popcorn. Um, and and this, de this debate is very circular because the Free Will Freddies will accuse the Chosen Charlies of adding God's choosing to the death, burial and resurrection as a gospel requirement. But then the Chosen Charlies will accuse the Free Will Freddies of adding Free Will decisionism to the gospel. And so to get to the matter at hand, why I won't anathematise either the Free Will Freddies or the Chosen Charlies, and I, I wouldn't accuse either side of adding to the gospel is, as I've said before, this, in the introduction, this whole debate of free will versus election, it can't answer the question, says, excuse me, what must I do to be saved? Because the answer is always the same. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And both sides are saying that. The idea that either God chooses who will be saved, or each man chooses to be saved, does not really change the answer to that question. If, if you answer the question by saying, God has to elect you to be saved, that's maybe not very helpful to somebody that you're giving the gospel to who has a very carnal mindset. And it doesn't actually answer the question because the question was, what must I do? He didn't ask what God needs to do. Okay, so on the other hand, a lot of Christians on the free will side, not in free grace, but, you know, on the free will side, they'll, they'll use language like, 
you need to allow God into your life or you need to choose or you need to surrender. And I do appreciate that free graces avoid this terminology, but a lot of Christians say that because it's an inevitable part of their free will mentality. That this idea that I have to give God permission to do things or permission to save me. But the thing is, he is God. I don't really get why he needs my approval or permission. And theologically, I think the Bible make, makes a much more compelling case that God chose us rather than the other way around. Um, you know, I think it'd be pretty hard to argue against that personally. So free will versus God's election doesn't answer the issue, what must I do to be saved? Rather, it deals with the, the somewhat more philosophical issue of why one person believes and another person does not believe. The, the same gospel goes out to both people. They're given the same instruction, but person A follows the commandment and person B doesn't. Okay. Now, when we anathematise those who add works to the gospel, we do have a clear dichotomy presented by Paul that either it's by grace or works. So Paul deals with both sides of that debate and goes into detail about how works are essentially incompatible with grace in terms of the gospel of salvation. On the other hand, though, when we're dealing with predestination and election, Paul addresses the topic really from only one side of the debate. He, he describes predestination and election in various discourses, such as Ephesians 1, and he ties that in with salvation. Technically speaking, he does not directly allude to free will in these discourses, and he doesn't strictly describe free will as being inherently antithetical to predestination. Now, even Jesus made various statements where one might infer God is doing the choosing, and like Paul, Jesus would use the word elect. But Jesus never directly entered into a discourse on free will specifically, nor did he ever rebuke the Pharisees or the Sadducees or the chief priests for their views on free will. Okay. Now, secular history tells us that during Jesus' time, according to an ancient historian, Josephus, there's not very much on this, but the there were three Jewish sects, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and there's also the Essenes, um, who aren't mentioned in scripture, but they, they, all three of them had differing views on God's providence. And some scholars dispute Josephus on this as well. So forgive me if I'm a little bit mixed on the details, but the Essenes, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, who scripture is silent on, they leaned extremely heavily on divine providence that just about everything happened according to God making it happen. So a very fatalistic, predeterministic kind of a view. The Sadducees, on the other hand, who Jesus dealt with occasionally, uh, were very heavily free will leaning and attributed all affairs to the doings of man without any direct interference from God. Whereas the Pharisees, who Jesus dealt with most of the time, had somewhat balanced views on this, where they recognised predestination over some matters, such as our material life, but, dis but ascribed free will to other matters, such as our spiritual life, which sounds almost backwards to me, but you know, I'd, I'd have thought it was the other way around, but there you go. So this debate is nothing new. It's been around for a very long time. It's been unresolved for a very long time. Various pre-Nicene Christians had conflicting views about this, and uh, fast forward today, most of Christians and Judaism is very free will leaning with some exceptions like Calvinism and like sovereign grace. Now, as I alluded to, Jesus had various conflicts with the chief priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees, uh, the Pharisees over various issues, such as denying the resurrection, which the Pharisees were on the correct side of the issue, or adding their own commandments and negating God's commandments and so on, which of course they were on the wrong side of the issue. Now, Christ, he did warn about the doctrine of both the Pharisees and the Sadducees, in Matthew 16. But that had more to do with asking Jesus for a sign. It had nothing to do with predestination or free will. So I don't have enough information in the Bible to condemn or rebuke excessively somebody who is free will leaning who would disagree with me on this topic because it is a very one-sided topic. We see predestination and election being talked about, but not necessarily 
expounded on to explain precisely what it means, nor to make it ex explicitly exclusionary to free will, okay? So, going back to this controversy between free will, free grace uh, of Greg Jackson, David Benjamin, Jack Smack, and so on, versus sovereign grace with truth, spell, and destroying the works of the devil, and so on. You know, I, I don't agree with the way that Chris and Lewis did excessive videos against Greg Jackson, and I think they overlabored the point. I think I'm more concerned, I, I more disagree with Greg Jackson on the James 2 interpretation, really, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I think they went a bit excessive with it, though, to be honest. And one of their criticisms about Greg was that he said something along the lines of um, that he's working on his atheist neighbour to try and get him saved, and... Uh, the predestinarians were very alarmed by that because they accused him of being the saviour instead of Jesus. However, Paul himself used terms like, I might save some, and Jude says, some save with fear. So even the apostles who gave us teaching on predestination and election were not against using language whereby they attributed man's actions or behaviours influencing whether a person got saved. And so even predestina predestinarians can be in danger of trying to play the humble card, but end up sounding more holier than thou than even the apostles themselves, really. But, so, you know, I don't have a problem with uh, Greg Jackson's terminology there, really, in, in terms of what he was saying. I don't have a strong objection to it. But I also, as well, on the same by the same measure, I don't appreciate that from the free will side, Chris and Lewis have gone into a lot of effort in detail to show the scriptures and try to reason with the free will Freddies about what Paul and Jesus are communicating about election. And mainly all they're getting from the free will side is, you're a bunch of Calvinist devils, you're stupid unsaved Calvinists, uh, I don't care if you don't backload works or not, you reject, you know, if you reject progressive sanctification, I don't care what your position is, I'm going to accuse you of being a Calvinist and just ignore your arguments and just shut you off. Um, and I'm particularly alarmed when free will Freddies say that God is capricious and whimsical if he doesn't give total free will because they, they are in danger of trying to judge the character of God and frankly, you know, you're not a Christ-hating atheist you don't get to judge the character of God okay, so um, that's all I'll really say on that hopefully as I progress through this series uh, you know, the discussion will remain peaceful uh, and I'll try not to make any enemies on both sides, but you never know, I could upset him both sides. We'll just see. Get your popcorn out.